Great. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here. Um, <clears throat> I want to share with you two projects um, that are very different from each other. I think you have to start the timer. Um, very different from each other and um, different program, different location, different uh, uh, setting. Um, uh, though maybe uh, they could be said to, to share one thing which is in a way a celebration of life. <clears throat> Even one of them is about um, life and the other one is about death. Um, they, I think, both somehow celebrate um, life. <clears throat> Let's just start. Um, uh, a few years ago, I received an invitation by a foundation, the Albers Foundation, to participate in a competition for a new hospital, a maternity and pediatric hospital in Tambacunda, Eastern Senegal. And I was thinking about um, why, to why to participate. I'd been in Senegal many times, um, and, and, and I was thinking, deeply about uh, what could be my contribution. And after a while, I wrote back to the foundation saying, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a wonderful country. Uh, it's a wonderful program. It would be so honorable to do it. But I think the competitive process is not the right process. I think uh, 10 architects in London, Paris, Berlin, Basel, New York, inventing, quote unquote, a, a solution for uh, uh, an area that they've never been to is not the right approach. Uh, so I wish you good luck. Um, uh, I'm sure you'll have great contributions. Thank you. Goodbye. And <clears throat> then a few hours later, I receive a telephone call by the head of the foundation saying, Manuel, you really kind of hit the nail. Um, let's meet. Uh, and out of that uh, came a commission, a direct commission to, to do the project. Um, uh, that was really not the intention. <coughs> uh, so a few weeks later, we found ourselves in, 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 in Senegal, in Tambacunda, um, and, and we started the project uh, not uh, through design, but we started the pro uh, project uh, through, through research, um, spending uh, a lot of time uh, speaking to the client, speaking to the patient, speaking to the doctors, uh, looking at craft, looking at, at the condition of, uh, and, and, and it is really quite precarious uh, there. Um, <clears throat> um, the health situation, public health, uh, the climate, um, the contractors, and so on, putting together um, a kind of, uh, let's say, uh, research uh, booklet uh, that, that accumulates all this kind of knowledge that we uh, try to, to, to collect. Uh, and only then, Again, speaking to the doctors, what do they actually need? Uh, an incredibly engaged, uh, committed staff um, asking them uh, in a way, uh, how do they operate? How do they work? How do they literally operate? And they were drawing kind of the brief uh, for us. Um, and that's literally the, the drawings that the doctors uh, were, were putting on paper and we just kind of translated them. <clears throat> um, and only then we started. Um, we had a site. It is an existing regional hospital. Tambacunda is a city of 100,000 people. It's maybe one of the hottest, largest uh, cities in, in uh, Western Central Africa. <clears throat> and and um, uh, uh, it's the, uh, an extension, uh, quite a large extension, 3,000 square meters, 200 beds um, of maternity and pediatrics. So this is where new life starts. Um, and um, we eventually developed a, a design that uh, proposes a building that is kind of as long as possible and as thin as possible. The length is a, a kind of a reaction to the social condition. <clears throat> you don't come on your own to the hospital. Often you come from the villages with your family and you stay a long time with a lot of people. So it needs a lot of uh, social spaces uh, for people to gather. And the thinness is, is a, um, uh, maybe a result of climate consideration. This looks like what Philip was so showing briefly earlier. Um, we wanted to cross-ventilate the building through this kind of brisole, perforated brick walls. Um, and once we were developing the, the proposal further, we <coughs> asked um, the, the contractor, um, Dr. Mageba, uh, to test the bricks. So we did something that is very familiar in a European context. We asked the contractor to build a test facade, uh, gave him drawings and asked him to do that on the site of the hospital. And a few weeks later, he sent us this drawing, uh, this photo, which didn't look really familiar and looked like more than what we asked him to, to build. Uh, and a few weeks later, he sent us this photograph, um, and he surprised us that he didn't build a test facade and he bu didn't build it on the hospital site, 
but he thought, why build a test facade that you would then turn, uh, turn down after uh, a week or so? He, he actually built a school uh, out of this, uh, which was <clears throat> an amazing uh, kind of uh, uh, hijacking of my uh, uh, drawing, and it's a kind of shared program, um, shared um, authorship, shared function. Uh, uh, and that's uh, the guy, he's, he's really quite a genius. He's a doctor by day and a contractor by afternoon um, and, and has a super cool shirt. Um, uh, and, and the whole thing is, is uh, then eventually based on this brick uh, which we uh, cast on site. Um, I'm making uh, maybe 15,000 or 50,000 of them and eventually started to, to build a hospital um, uh, but we thought it can't just be the hospital, uh, so uh, we shouldn't focus just on a single building as trying to find uh, a reaction to some um, precarious condition. Uh, so we extended, uh, or the, 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 the foundation also extended it to include a staff housing, uh, which we are just now starting. Um, my wife and me initiated uh, a playground uh, in Tambacounda. It's the first playground of, of uh, Eastern Senegal. <clears throat> we thought it's good um, if there's uh, the, the sound of laughter uh, uh, next to the hospital. Um, and when the contractor was commissioned himself to do kindergartens, uh, he, he really liked the brick, uh, so he used, started to use the brick uh, um, himself. The, the brick be, uh, gained a, a kind of a life of its own. <clears throat> so. Uh, uh, the, the whole uh, project, in a way, became a regional project. Um, uh, so from the scale of the brick to the scale of the region, also all the money that um, we invest stays in the region. Uh, nothing is actually imported. Uh, so it's really a, a, a from the scale of the brick to the scale of a region, um, uh, we try to uh, find a way of reacting uh, locally uh, there. And then <clears throat> eventually the hospital was finished last year, uh, late last year, handed over, um, and, and um, I think, uh, I hope the, the photos tell a bit, little bit of um, the heat, uh, uh, 40 degrees, um, and this kind of layering of, of skins, of screens, uh, where the wind, where the breeze passes through, we don't need air conditioning, um, we uh, can reduce the load of electricity <coughs> and, and uh, create a comfortable climate in a way the building itself becomes a climate machine. Uh, in itself, the playground becomes the favorite hangout of the construction workers, and at 8 a.m. in the morning, the building turns into a disco ball, uh, and, and um, the building, and, and this is maybe slightly kitschy to say, but I, it really makes me happy, is itself really has an impact on public health locally, uh, saving lives or, or improving uh, the lives and... and um, uh, the, the, the process of, of giving birth, uh, and, and this is, was really wonderful to see. Um, change of locations. Um, we go to um, Kiev, uh, to Ukraine. In uh, September 1941, uh, Nazis enter Kiev, and um, a, a few days after um, taking over the city, um, they round up all the Jews of, this, of Kiev and uh, order them to march with the suitcase of their belongings to the northwest of the city edge, of the then city edge. And uh, the Jews were thinking that they would be deported somewhere, but in fact, um, within two days, 35,000 Jews are killed, are shot um, in a ravine um, on the then city edge uh, of, of Kiev. Uh, and, and these historic photographs taken by a Nazi photographer <coughs> um, just in the aftermath of the ma massacre, um, I think, uh, speak uh, for themselves. Mm. It's the worst um, shooting massacre. It's, it's part of the so-called Holocaust by bullets. Um, uh, and and uh, maybe um, uh, and there hasn't been a, a massacre in the 20th century where so many people get shot in so little time, and also in the weeks later, this area becomes the site uh, of mass killing where maybe altogether 100,000 people are killed uh, in this ravine called Babinyar. And I was commissioned at the end of uh, 2020 to design a synagogue uh, on this place, and I thought, how do you react as an architect uh, to this kind of enormous killing? Um, darkness of what we as people are 
capable of doing. Uh, and, and a common response would have been to say, um, uh, maybe we need to do something very somber, very dark, very heavy. You know? And we know these kind of Holocaust memorials that uh, use uh, concrete. And in a way, there's almost like a stupid equation that if the crime is very heavy, the architecture to commemorate the crime also needs to be very heavy. And I thought this is stupid in a way. Uh, I want to do something very different. Um, uh, so this is the, the kind of the, the site of the, uh, the ravine. Um, it's very topographical. Um, <clears throat> that's the site of the synagogue um, that was given to me. Um, and, and I thought, uh, instead of doing something very heavy and, and, and um, uh, monolithic, I'd rather want to do something that is transformative, because 35,000 people were killed there that all had their own desire to live, all their own personality, their own language, their own dreams. Uh, we can't reduce it to a single kind of um, commemorative statement. We have to have this kind of openness. So I thought we could maybe introduce a new ritual, um, something transformative. And I thought of these wonderful kind of pop-up books um, that we all love from museum shops. Uh, we can't, um, uh, uh, we always put our nose inside. And in a way, they operate exactly like synagogues do. You know, when we go to a synagogue, uh, what we do is um, uh, we go and open a book uh, and we read the book together, uh, and the book tells kind of a new world of stories, histories, morals, uh, law, and so on. And that's, in a way, exactly what these kind of pop-up books do. Uh, we get lost in the universe that they open up. So that's exactly what, uh, in a way, we try to do. So it's a building that opens up. Ah, sorry, this was supposed to... Um, be a, a, a small movie that shows how um, ah, it does um, how it opens. That's uh, a, quite a large building, in fact, um, 100 square meters. Um, and another reference uh, was the old uh, wooden synagogues that we had in that existed in Western Ukraine that um, were all destroyed also in in the Nazi era and uh, were amazingly beautifully painted inside with this kind of universe of, of uh, ornaments, um, uh, writings, and flowers. Um, and then what we did was um, we took um, the, the chart of the, uh, um, the uh, kind of star constellation uh, of uh, the night uh, uh, of the 29th of September 1941, the day that the massacre started uh, and turned it into uh, a painting, a painting where every star is a flower, every flower is a star. Uh, and uh, so on the one hand, you have this very beautiful painting that now sits on the, underneath the ceiling, but it marks and, and uh, kind of anchors the synagogue in a very precise day, and it's in a way the last thing that the Jews saw be before they were shot. Uh, so it plays also with this kind of uh, uncanny connection between beauty and death and maybe reawakening. The whole synagogue is constructed out of wood. Um, this creates a certain kind of level of fragility um, uh, and, and it's something that is very important to me because um, uh, in contrast to a heavy commemorative building, it's very light, actually. It's recycled wood, uh, and, and because it is wood, uh, it needs to be kind of cared for every day. It needs to be uh, cleaned, it needs to be uh, treated every day, and in a way, this kind of everyday treatment is also something that could be called remembrance um, uh, in, in, in practice. Um, uh, it was uh, painted by hand uh, very elaboratively uh, from the interior, this is uh, on, on one of the days of, of inauguration. It shows my wonderful wife um, and our wonderful uh, son. Um, and why I show this is not out of uh, vanity, but um, uh, for me this is important. Um, our son was born just maybe a week uh, before I, I received the commission to, to design this. So when I was, uh, in a way, reading about uh, the event of Babinia, um, I was reading about uh, reading two books that uh, eyewitness reports that really told the story of this unbearable, incredibly inhumane massacre um, uh, that really goes to the depth and darkness of what we as human beings are capable of. And at the same time, 
I was looking at my son who was so happy to be alive and who was so happy to explore his new world and laughing. And I thought, no, this building cannot be about death. It has to be about celebrating the beauty of life. And that's what my son, in a way, taught me. Uh, and that's what it is. Um, uh, so um, I don't know if that... Uh, uh, it, it actually does open. Um, um, but the movie takes maybe a little bit too long. It's, it's a manual process. It takes a lot of uh, um, strength. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It's not something easy. It takes also many people. It's a little bit of a spectacle. Um, uh, but for the sake of uh, keeping the, the, the time, I'll um, maybe shortcut it. Um, you, we all have to meet in Kiev uh, after the war to, to uh, um, witness its opening. Um, it's quite uh, fascinating, actually, and it, uh, you can imagine it's an incredible technical achievement uh, to, to do that. Um, it was inaugurated early October, um, uh, 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 the 80th anniversary of this uh, massacre with many presidents, prime ministers coming. Uh, these photos uh, seem uh, like from another um, uh, kind of uh, era. Um, <laughs> And uh, on the very first days of the war, um, rockets hit Babin Yar and killed actually also uh, five people just 100, 150 meters away from the synagogue. Um, uh, uh, so showing here the, the site of uh, the rocket attack. Um, uh, the, the building um, uh, has remained and, and still stands. And, and of course, every loss of life is much, 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 much more important uh, than the loss of a building. But in a way, what um, has been lost through the war, and that's another kind of tragedy, is this kind of fragility, is this kind of ambiguity, is the kind of uh, colorfulness uh, of, of uh, what uh, uh, I think we should celebrate. It's been turned into an, a, a moment where we have to take a stand for either black or white, and um, what has been destroyed is this kind of range of colors and, the, uh, and the, the power of fragility that the building wants to celebrate. Thank you for your attention.